My name is Jonathan Tien and you're watching Impact Channel. Fooling around cause you don't know what to do Try to find yourself in the eye of the storm Swept away with the times as you are groping in darkness Hi everyone, our guest today is Jonathan Hultien from Tribulation. Welcome back to Hungary. How was your journey? Thank you very much. It was very good. Um, I flew in this morning and I spent a few hours with my friend Sultan mm -hmm. in town eating nice food. All right, good. What did you try? We went to his favorite vegan place. Mm. Um, it's close to his, where his friend has his, his gym, so they mm -hmm. all used, usually go there after they have been there. Mm. Just getting the proteins. <laughs> <laughs> was it called the hummus bar? I don't, I don't remember the name, mm -hmm. um, but they was a lot of um, tofu and seitan. Right. So you're a vegan yourself? I am not, but I like here vegan food a lot. Right. And how do you like his band, Devil Straight? It's amazing. Mm -hmm. I love it. It's, uh, we're actually going on a tour together mm -hmm. in um, uh, November, yeah. Uh, when you're on tour, what are the most essential things that you bring with yourself? Uh, well, it's the gear mm -hmm. and my own personal stuff, like clothes or... But it not, it's not much, it's, it's practically the gear and I'm trying to get as, as much of that with me as possible. Mm -hmm. And I'm also trying to expand the show, I'm trying to figure out how to do that and bringing as much mm, more gear. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about lambs. I couldn't bring it this time though. Today. Okay. Next time. <laughs> and do you have any special warm up technique or ritual before you go on stage? Not with this yet. I think that's something that comes with having done something for a very long time and have done uh, patterns create uh, come they come into being by just certain so suddenly you're just doing them by yourself it's becomes a habit and then becomes a ritual mm -hmm. I was asking because you seem to be kind of spiritually involved in the show when you just showed up on stage mm -hmm. so it seemed like you know you're really prepared for this special night yeah well today I was kind of nervous, so I spent a lot of time getting into the right mindset. Mm -hmm. So I, I think I got rid of most of the nervousness uh, before the show, uh, fortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, you played here with Tribulation not so long time ago with Insomnium. What's the story with your band? Well, Oscar is our new drummer. Mm -hmm. uh, it's our second tour with him. We are partly through that. We are becoming a new band, and with a new album and everything, it's a constant uh, evolution into something new. So yeah, everything is new in a sense. Although everything is very, very similar to as it has, has always been, and it's like a constant curve going somewhere. Although it's a bit up and down, but it's always like in a certain direction. And I think that's uh, what we're doing, always going in a certain direction. Although the detours might be many and long, but we are... So you're going on the new album right now, yes? On a new tribulation album? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we haven't really started yet, but we have been talking a lot about it. And there are ideas, so I could say we are working on it theoretically. Any specific concept about the album? Not yet. Right. Not yet. <clears throat> and what is the difference mentally and spiritually when you perform with Tribulation and with your solo project? What's in your head when you're performing with Tribulation and with your solo band? I mean your solo project? Yeah, there's a difference, but I'm not sure that difference is going to be that huge in the end. Um, the difference, what well, the main difference is, of course, that I've played. 
I don't know, you know, maybe not a thousand shows, but a couple hundred shows. Mm -hmm. uh, and with this project, this was like my 19th show or something. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, it, things take time to get, it takes time to get them to know their art form and how to express yourself in the way you want to express yourself. You, you, you're, you're getting to know yourself by doing it. It's learning by doing it. So, but that's the thing. I feel like it's not much that huge of a difference, big, big of a difference in the end. It's like the same source of inspiration. I feel inspired. I feel very inspired with the tribulation because it's so intense and so um, engaging. It's, like, it's so physical. This is more calm, but uh, it's more emotionally. It's it's more passive aggressive uh, in a sense. It's, I mean, tribulation is played in your face aggressive, but this is more uh, a huge tension in your chest that wants to blue. I, I, I don't know. I can't express myself for now. Let the music do the talking then? Yes. Okay. And um, <clears throat> what do you do in your free time when you're not busy with your, with your music or creating artwork? I'm doing that all the time, so that's hard to answer. But what I'm doing to relax, uh, I'm going for walks in the forest. Listening a lot to audiobooks and occasionally I meet up with friends and hang out. But I'm so focused on just getting things done all the time, being productive, realizing my, my dreams. And is there any special place where you like to go to recharge your batteries or to relax? Yeah. Forests. I always long for forests, in a sense. And it's, it doesn't have to be like the biggest forest. It's okay with just something that is, can give me that feel of being more close to nature than sitting in an apartment. Let's go back in time a little bit. Uh, what were you like as a kid? Uh, uh, I've been told I was very happy, a happy kid, just happy to the degree, and very honest, apparently, and happy to the degree that people start to be annoyed, why are you so glad? <laughs> um, then, but also introverted, I'm still introverted, um, so I guess I haven't changed much. I'm not super happy, but <laughs> kind of happy. Do you have siblings? Yes. Brother, sister, yes. Three years younger brother, ten years younger sister. And what was the first band that got you into rock music or music in general? Well, my dad was really into 10cc and BB King and blues. My mother was really into, or she was working with church music. Band that I really started to listen to, like, was impressed by, to be impressed by. It was uh, Kiss, The Offspring, and yeah, uh, Spice Girls. I was really into Spice Girls when I was ten. Uh, what was your first instrument? Guitar, acoustic guitar. When I was ten. Got it from my dad. Do you remember the brand? No. The first song you learned to play? Yeah, I was 10. It was uh, a Christmas, so my dad gave me some guitar lessons. And the uh, first show as a fan? As a music listener? Well, the first show I went to. Well, we grew up in a town with a festival called Arvika Festivalen. Um, the town is called Arvika, and 
I saw a lot of bands there, and it was a huge thing for us. I think all of us got really inspired by that. And, but I don't remember the first band, <laughs> really, no. The first concert as a musician? Um, we played a lot of shows when we were kids um, in music school. Uh, we had a band, like Ensemble. Uh, please tell us about your gear. What kind of guitar do you use? Amp, pedals, strings? Well, with Tribulation, we are using Ernie Ball. We just started liking bands for some reason. We, we aren't endorsed by anyone okay. at this point. But uh, we'll see in the future. Okay. Uh, I am having a Boss multi effect pedal with uh, four channels. Adam is also using Boss and Johannes as well, I think. Yeah. Guitar wise? Guitar wise. Uh, Epiphones. I am having a thing for hollow bodies. If you had a chance and a time to learn a new instrument to play, what would it be? I'm playing a lot of piano, and I would really love to learn how to play that better. Mm -hmm. And a dream would be to perform classical pieces mm -hmm. on a higher level. That would be nice. And as a travel musician, what do you think? What the world can learn from the Swedish? <sighs> well, I feel like. I am the one learning from the world rather than uh, the world has, would have anything to do learn from the Swedish way, the Swedish way of being. I feel like the Swedish way of being is, uh, maybe this is a very subjective point of view, but I feel like this is a, the Swedish uh, mindset is kind of uh, low-key and introverted and there's something called the law of Jante that you shouldn't take place, or I mean, shouldn't uh, take space, mm -hmm. take up space, or be a nuisance. And uh, especially, I mean, coming, having that in me, and also being kind of an introverted guy, I have been, I've been tr really working on being able to communicate more properly and uh, not excuse my myself all the time and, you know. so I'm your therapist at the moment yes you are you are this is uh, this is great stuff. you want to talk about it no. <laughs> um, <laughs> if, you should, <laughs> if you should represent humanity to an intelligent alien race with any kind of artwork or piece of art what would you choose for that Music would be music for sure. I feel like that's the most direct art form. Mm -hmm. I had just had this idea that the most uh, neutral thing would be Bach or something. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's classical, but it's it's not so dramatic. It's just very suave, suave, <laughs> smooth, mm -hmm. and very elegant. Being sophisticated. Sophisticated, yeah, and it feels like it's it has something that appeals to a lot to everyone. Maybe not everyone, but it's there's a reason why it's so popular. It's so outdated, but it's timeless. It's timeless. Yeah. Is there any symbol that's really meaningful for you? Something that represents your personality? I definitely think and feel. Like that's the me the makeup that you're putting on has an effect on how you are perceiving yourself, and it has a power of transforming you, although very subtle, into a different way of perceiving, or a different mindset, or a different like way of being. And it's it's helpful. And I, if I had to say something, I would say the the eyes. The shape of these, these eyes, there's they just come back and come back. They mean something to me. 
and would you go for a time travel if you had a chance? And uh, just on just a vacation? To, yeah, or? just to observe, yeah. Yeah, of course. Where would you like to go? Future. It would be super interesting. <laughs> if you could summon a historical person and a mythical creature, a mythological creature for a chat, who would you pick? Uh, it would be really interesting to have a chat with a uh, really ancient, super wise being that has been in this world for the longest time, since the human time. So, which mytholo mythology are we looking at? Any. Any. Fena Mena, maybe, from. Uh, the Finnish uh, epic Kalevala. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting choice. Yeah. He was born out of the ocean, and, which is the, one of the first beings. Although it's, it's pretty unclear whether he says his, as far as I remember, he was the first being, but then suddenly there are other people as well. As it suddenly is, in, uh, it doesn't have to make sense in those epics, I guess. But yeah, it, He's like the, the archetype of the wise person. Maybe like Odin, for example. Mm -hmm. this, this, they are the same type of archetype, representing the same thing. Anyone from history? From history. It would be interesting to have a chat with Socrates. That would be interesting. And who is on your bucket list to work with? Actually, uh, I got the opportunity, or we got the opportunity, to work with one of my favorite artists called Anna Hanswolf, also a Swedish artist, and she made a contribution to the newest Revolution album on the instrumental track there. So that's that was one of that was on the bucket list <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Uh, many bands have retired or are going to retire in the near future. Black Sabbath has already retired, Motor has died out, and Slayer is on the uh, farewell tour at the moment. Mm. What do you think? How would this affect the, me the metal scene or the music scene in general? That leaves space for new things to take place. I mean, old bands can go on forever, and it's only natural. I don't think it's bad, so it's just the way it is. And new things are bound to to rise to prominence, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe not be big in the same way they were, or have the same type of fame or whatever. Or, I don't know, but things will happen. And it's not uh, necessarily bad. We'll see. Yes. And what are your plans for this year? Mm, yes, we are. Um, going to the US, hopefully. We are working on it at the moment. And uh, I'm going on a solo tour with uh, David, the Devil's Trade. Luis, maybe this was a secret. Not it's okay. Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. But uh, yeah, so that's like the two main tours. Any last words to your fans? Thank you so much, everyone who come out, who is, who are coming out to the shows and are appreciating the music that I'm doing. I, it's a hard. Thank you so much. Heartfelt thanks. Thank you for the show and for the interview. Thank you so much. Thank. Well,